Hey, what's up? This is the NLE Ninja with Rampant Design Tools. In this edition of Running Rampant, I'm going to show you how to use Studio Reflections. Studio Reflections is a collection of 296 QuickTime clips of high-speed light effects and reflection stock footage clips, which are truly beautiful. Available in 2K, 4K, and 5K via immediate download or USB 3.0 drive, these clips are perfect for VFX, compositing, graphic design, and more. Since these are drag and drop effects, they work in all popular editing and compositing software such as Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Motion, Avid Media Composer, and more. Today, I'll show you some examples of how to get creative with Studio Reflections. For these examples, I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro 10. For my first example, I will break down how I create a simple title split screen and a lower third using reflection clips along with Creative Impatience Feathered Crop Filter. For my second example, I'll show you how to create a VH1 effect using Photoshop and the built-in Ken Burns effect in Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, this is Tamia, and every time I'm in Chicago, I like hanging out with my girl, just Nakia Nichelle. Without further ado, let's run rampant. I'm here in Adobe Premiere Pro, but these effects can be created using any NLE with crop tools or other compositing tools. For my first example, I use some footage of a woman dancing in front of a white background. To get the look that we have right now, I use Creative Impatience free feathered crop plugin to crop out and feather the edges. After that, I move the clip to the left and place it on track four. Beneath the clip, I place three different reflection clips. I use reflection clips 036, 037, and 039 for this effect but you could use whichever reflection clips you choose. I scaled each reflection clip to about 55% and used a variety of blend modes like screen, add, and color dodge. On track five, I placed a title layer with some fake info on who is in the clip. Let me break down how easily you can create a lower third with reflections. For this simple lower third, I use reflection clip 036. Along with the Feathered Crop Filter, Color Balance Filter, and Drop Shadow, I crop the top and bottom to taste. I then change the hue on the reflection to a different color and applied the Drop Shadow Filter. Then, I applied a title layer with some fake info for the clip on track one. Once I was done doing that, I applied cross dissolves at the endpoint of the title and reflection clip and got this. Effects like a simple lower third or a title screen are just a fraction of what you can do with 4K reflections. Let's jump over to Final Cut Pro 10 to learn how to create an effect used on a variety of VH1 shows. If you've ever seen VH1's The Fabulous Life Of, then you may have noticed an effect they do when they introduce a person responsible for creating a celebrity asset. The person says who they are, a title slide moves across the screen, and you see a freeze frame Ken Burns animation with the lower third and the background being blurred and colorized. We're going to create our own version using Final Cut Pro 10, Photoshop, and Reflection Clips. Here is what we'll be creating today. Hi, this is Tamia, and every time I'm in Chicago, I like hanging out with my girl, just Nakia Nichelle. I'm in Final Cut Pro 10, and in my timeline, I have footage of recording artists to Mia Hill from an old project I was given permission to use. Right now, I have my playhead at the point where I want to export a still frame from. So I'm going to go to File, Share, and select Save Current Frame. I'm going to click on the Settings tab, and from the drop down menu, I'm going to select PNG. From there, I'm going to hit Next, 
and I'm going to designate a place to save my still frame. Since I did this already, let's head over to Photoshop where I could break down how I extracted the talent from the still. I'm here in Photoshop and I'm going to break down how I extracted the talent from the image. There are dozens of methods for extracting people from a still. In this situation, I use the pen tool method. So here's what my selection looks like in its normal stage with no selection. And here is what it looks like when I cut her out. So I use a combination of the pen tool and the refined edge feature to smooth things out. From the refined edge menu, I was able to create a new image based on this. So now I have two versions of the picture, one that's the cutout and one that's the main image. If I save this as a PSD, this should come into Final Cut Pro as a compound clip. So I'm going to head back to Final Cut Pro where I've already imported my PSD sequence. Back in Final Cut Pro, I have a compound clip of my PSD open in the timeline. First, I want to select my cutout layer and disable it temporarily. So let's select it and press the V key. With the main image selected, apply a Gaussian blur filter to it. In the inspector, change the amount to about 70%. Next, apply the glow filter to it. Let's make sure that the amount is set to 100%, which it is by default. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the color of this overall image. So let's click on Correction 1 to get to the color board. For your own version of this effect, you can choose any color you want. I went with a medium pink color for my effect. Once you've settled on the color, let's add some reflection clips. So let's go back to our inspector. I'm going to go to my keyword collection of rampant 4K reflections. I'm going to use reflection clips 001 and 036 for this effect, but you can use any reflection clips to achieve the final result. Let's place reflection clip 001 on the secondary storyline so that it moves our cutout to the storyline above. With the reflection selected, go to the inspector. Change the spatial conform from fit to none. Change the scale from 100 to 66. Change the blend mode to screen. Let's option drag five duplicates and keep them on the same storyline. Next, let's place reflection clip 036 on the storyline above our other reflection clip. Change the spatial conform from fit to none. Change the scale to 54. And let's change our blend mode to screen Bring the opacity down to about 54. Now, let's option drag a duplicate. After we've done all that, let's re-enable the cutout image by selecting it and pressing the V key. Our composite is coming along very well, but we need a lower third to identify our talent. Now, you could use any lower third that comes with Final Cut Pro, or you could create your own using Motion or Photoshop. I'm going to jump over to Photoshop real quickly to show you the lower third I created. So this is the lower third I created. I used a combination of shape layers and text layers to create this. Now, I, saved it, I could save it as a PSD, but in this situation, I decided to save it as a PNG just to keep it as an image since we're not going to be manipulating any of the layers. So I'm going to go back to Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go to my Image Smart Collection and select the lower third here. 
I'm going to click Command-2 to go to my timeline and press the Home key, and I'm going to connect that to our primary storyline. So here's our lower third here. Let's drag out the duration to make it match everything else in the timeline. Now our lower third's a bit big, but we're going to make it smaller by selecting it and going to the inspector. So let's select it now. Let's change the scale from 100 to 51. And I'm going to move this towards the right side of the screen. Once you have your reflections and lower third taken care of, let's go back to our main project timeline. In the main timeline, let's overwrite our compound clip in. Let's set up our Ken Burns animation. First, I'm going to select my clip and press Shift C. This will bring up the crop tools, and we are going to want to choose Ken Burns. I'll have the start position be full screen, and our end position just barely take away your headroom, and the lower third. In the timeline, let's make sure our compound clip is about 7 seconds. To finish this off, we're going to need a title slide to fly across the screen. Let's head back to Photoshop, and I'm going to show you the title slide I made for this. So here in Photoshop, I made a title slide with dimensions of 1920 by 500. I made the background black, and then I added another shape layer with a white gloss. I added some text using bevel and emboss, as well as inner shadow to get the look that we have now. Once again, I could have imported this as a PSD, but I didn't want to deal with it as a compound clip, so I exported it as a PNG. Now you could go a different route if you choose to, if you want to add more animation and import it as a PSD. This was just the route I took for this particular project. So since I've already imported this into my browser, let's head back to Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go to my image smart collection, and I'm going to select my title text transition now. Let's move the playhead to the five second mark and connect the text transition to our primary storyline. I'm going to press the Q key to connect it now. We'll select our text slide transition, and let's hit Control D to change its duration from 10 seconds to 1 second. Let's move to the endpoint. Let's change the scale from 100 to 219. With your playhead at the endpoint of your text slide, set a keyframe for position and make it move off screen to the left. Move towards the out point of your text slide and make it move off screen to the right. Now, if I put my playhead back at its endpoint and I move across, you'll see it's moving across screen from left to right. Now, you should have the video clip smoothly transition into the freeze frame animation. In my example, I added some sound effects and music. If you want, do that for your effect, and I'll be back with you in just a second. So here's our final result. Hi, this is Tamia, and every time I'm in Chicago, I like hanging out with my girl, just Nakia Nichelle. Utilizing the studio reflection clips, along with Photoshop, helped us achieve an effect seen on a lot of VH1 shows. Knowing the techniques of this effect, can be useful for future projects down the line. As you can see from these examples, studio reflections are subtle, yet deliver the impact needed on any video. You can learn more about this product and other products by visiting the Rampant Design Tools website here. You can also keep up with Rampant Design Tools by following them on Twitter at Rampant Design. And don't forget to like their Facebook page here. I'm the NLA Ninja with NLA Ninja Effects asking you to stay creative and run rampant. 
Thanks for watching.